Hi everybody, this is Eddie Richardson. My name is James. Yes, I'm Bob Big Sarge Curry. Carolina Love. And this is, and this is my, 10 minutes. my 10 minutes. My 10 minute story. Welcome everybody to another edition of my 10 minute stories. I have the distinct honor to welcome you guys, my coach, the head trainer, the BAMF himself, Mr. Lance Adams, owner of the Warrior Warehouse where I go get my weekly beat downs. Uh, Mr. Adams, thank you for coming on the show. We are so glad to have you, brother. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure uh, to be on your show and uh, I definitely uh, look forward to all the things that you're doing here. Oh man, I appreciate it. So let's jump right into it. Let my viewers know a little bit about yourself, your background and your history. Okay, my name is Lance Adams. I'm the owner of the Warrior Warehouse, Columbia, South Carolina. And it's a full service performance, fitness, uh, combat sports and tactical solution facility and empowerment facility. Uh, me starting out, uh, I went in the uh, Marine Corps right out of high school. I was in the late entry program and went in there right in my 12th grade year. Uh, from the Marine Corps, I actually started working in the medical field. Really? A lot of people don't know, right? <laughs> I was a, was a surgical technician at Aiken Regional Medical Center. Whoa. I did that for about close to two years. My dad was NYPD. I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York, and so he was a, a police officer up there that he moved down here because he wanted a better life for his family. I stayed right in bedford Stuy, Really? The same place that <laughs> Biggie Smalls uh, grew up. And matter of fact, on my pictures, Biggie Smalls was actually in my kindergarten in my first and second grade class. What? Yeah. So no, oh, nobody, nobody knew who we were. See, was. so now we got the exclusive. Exactly. exactly. I appreciate exactly. that. No, and nobody knew who he was, you know, at that point in time. But, you know, as we got older, we all, man, that's, you know, that's uh, Biggest Malls, whatever. So, after that, like I said, we moved down here. And then after I was a certain technician to work in the medical field, you know, that itch for law enforcement started calling to me. And uh, with that, that was the least thing that I thought I was going to be because I was kind of like a bad child. <laughs> I was out there in the streets. I was doing stuff. I ain't had no business. So, I didn't think that that was going to be the actual route for me, but then after, you know, different events happened in my life that pushed me into going into the military, I wanted that structure. Right. I uh, wanted that discipline, so I went in the Marine Corps, and right after that, uh, after I did the stint in the medical field, I got into law enforcement. My first law enforcement was working at the South Carolina Department of Correction. I worked out in the maximum security prison out in Allendale, South Carolina. Okay. And then from there, I, I, I wanted to be part of the best. So I went off of there and I became a South Carolina State Trooper with the South Carolina High Patrol. I was stationed down in Orangeburg, South Carolina. And then I served there for a good many years and then I wanted to try a different side of law enforcement. So I got into, uh, moved up here to Richland County, Columbia, worked for the Richland County Sheriff's Department, then to Columbia Police Department. And in 2016, I took a step of faith and stepped out on my own and did my own business. And so uh, it was definitely something that was God ordained for me to do that. It, everything that I did is now being done through my businesses, through the other adventures that I have. I started in uh, martial arts when I was 14 years old when I seen Bruce Lee enter the drag. <laughs> That's what started me off. And from that point in time, you know, I, I went to my dad to uh, help me to pay for martial arts lessons at that point in time. You know, he just, he was the only person working really couldn't afford it. So I've been working ever since I was 12 years old. I was going to steal a bit of my hard work. So I went out, got me a job, started saving up, and was able to save up enough money to pay for my first three months of martial arts wow. lesson. And once uh, my family realized that I was serious about it, they started helping me. My sister, my older sister, she started helping me. She said, if you're serious about this, I'll help to pay for it. So that's how that got started. So now everything I'm doing is based upon Everything I did in life, from the martial arts to the athletics, playing football, basketball, to military, to law enforcement, and now I'm actually living my dream of actually doing everything I've learned and, and, and experienced in my life to be able to help others. That's crazy. So, did you did you do any competition, or was it all recreation in your martial arts? Oh, yeah. I, I fought for years. I mean, uh, I fought down the Battle of Atlanta. I traveled. Uh, all over the tri-state area to uh, to New York to Florida, so I was on a competition circuit for a long time. Uh, I got well over now over a hundred fights. Oh, God. I'm 46 years old, and the last fight I had was just last year, where I fought uh, 
right here in Columbia for conflict, uh, excuse me, for uh, Stokes promotion and a full contact uh, Muay Thai kickboxing competition. Okay, so what I know a lot of people think like once they start getting older in the years that oh man, my window is passed and I'm too old for all this stuff. What do you have to say for those guys who, who are, you know, 30 plus who, who really want to get into it but don't know if their body can, can sustain it or, or, or prepare for it? I tell people like this, listen, if you are going if you are going to die if you say you want to die. And that's what I tell people. If you say in your mind that I can't do this no more, you won't. The fight that I had last year, I was 46 years old, and I'm 46 to 47 this year. I had against a guy that was 23 years younger than me, and I won. So he had youth on his side. He had, you know, whatever else. Right. But that's the only thing in my mind that I figured you had on your side. You're younger than me. Other than that, you know, I pride myself in taking care of myself and still practicing. If your mind says you can do it and you practice enough to do it, you can do it. That's good. Hey guys, we're gonna take a break. We'll be right back. This is my 10 minute stories. This is Lance Adams, owner of the Warrior Warehouse, Columbia, South Carolina, and this is my 10 minute story. All right, guys, welcome back to another edition of my 10 minute stories. This is KJ Bradley. I'm here with Lance Adams, the owner of Warrior Warehouse. Uh, so before we went on break, we were talking about the gym. Mm -hmm. I want to know a little bit about the program. I know you said you've been you've been uh, in the martial arts since a very young age. Right. Is that what inspired you to start the youth program? Uh, actually, what started what inspired me to start the youth program, the martial arts as well, but also with me as being somewhat of a troubled youth. But probably more so would be when I got into law enforcement and I began working with stuff like the gang unit and I was a youth advocate. I started seeing that there was so many youth out of here that was misguided, misdirected, and many times people was out there saying, you know, are these kids just bad, whatever case may be, but there's something behind every child that's out here acting a certain way. Awesome. So what else you guys got on the plate? I know you guys are, are deep into the community service sector. I always see you guys out doing uh, workouts out in the Capitol and, and out in the parks just to get that visibility. What other programs you want to shine the light on? We also have a program that we do called the Warrior Women Program. So with the Warrior Women Program, we put in the women's head and in their hand, you can do anything you put your mind to. So it's an empowerment program to let you realize you are strong and we're going to tap into that strength. One of the things that we have going out, we have something that's called Girls, Guns, and Grills. <laughs> it is a shooting program. It's, it's a thing where we get these women together. We teach them how to use a firearm. On top of that, it's an empowerment, it's a bonding thing with other women that's out there. And then after that, you have fellowship, we fire the grill, we cook, we eat, have a good time, and you bond in the, you know, in the, you know, in the world of sisterhood and, and, and empowerment and go from there. So that's what uh, that is about. That sounds like an amazing program. I appreciate it. I like, that. I like that concept, that idea, giving, giving women or just reminding them that they have that power within them and just helping them bring that out and realize it. Absolutely. I think that's a, that's a that's a, a very empowering thing and it's truly needed in this day of time. Hey guys, we'll be right back. Once again, this is my 10 minute stories. I'm here with Lance Adams. See you in a sec. This is Lance Adams, owner of the Warrior Warehouse, Columbia, South Carolina, and this is my 10 minute story. All right guys, we're back. We're back. We're going to finish up this episode with Mr. Lance Adams. So tell us, so tell us what you got going on. What do we got coming up? What upcoming events you got going on at the gym and in the community? Okay. Well, of course, you know, in the midst of this COVID-19 crisis, it kind of shut a lot of stuff down. <laughs> so, you know, you figure out ways to improvise. Uh, so one of the things that we're going to be doing, of course, especially when we come off this COVID crisis, one of the things we're going to be doing is going to be doing something called the COVID comeback. Really? And that's going to be a program because a lot of people out here are hurting. A lot of people out here miss their way of life. They miss, you know, uh, get, being in the gym, all kinds of things of that nature. So we're going to do something, put together a special program for everybody in the community to be able to get back. It's going to be a jump start on people's lives. And, of course, you know, we got different things that are satellite programs at the Warrior Warehouse. Our CWP programs are going to be opened up soon, you know, and we're really working on that. So those are the, some of the programs that we're going to have going on and really push Again, our Boxing Before Bars program and our mentoring programs, that's really going to uh, be something that's going to be significant. So you said the CWP program. Tell me a little bit about that. What's that? Okay, so one of the things that we've developed at the Warrior Warehouse, being that we've done all the stuff with the 
you know, the performance fitness and the combat arts. I just feel that it will just naturally fit in by adding a tactical side to it because we're dealing with safety and security and, you know, and just taking care of self. So I added that division on there, which our tactic solution division. So we're doing the CWP classes and I want people to be safe. A lot of people out here have handguns. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to use them, number one. So it's about the, uh, teaching the proper dynamics and education behind a weapon and the nomenclature. So a lot of people fear those things. That's what's up. You guys heard it here. It's been a pleasure. One last episode. I'm here with my man, Mr. Lance Adams, entrepreneur extraordinaire. I learned some new things, didn't even know. So glad, man. This is why we do this show, man. I, I find out something new with every guest. I Absolutely. hope you guys had a pleasure. We'll see you guys next week. Wait, before we go, you got any last words? I forgot. I got to get this wrapped up. So, look in the camera. There's a guy out there who's sitting on the couch, waiting, don't know how to get up, don't know how to get started, don't know if he should get started. He or she should get started. Talk to him. Let him know. Okay, if you was right now sitting uh, in a graveyard looking at your own tombstone and it had your... 1970 whatever to 2000 what what would your dash say what would it say in between did you sit back all your life and just made a plan just to have a plan or did you implement it so i would tell that person that's out there right now every second that goes by is time that you're wasting okay you need to get out you need to grab your goals and you need to go out there and do something. Do not sit back, because time is something you cannot get back in one day. You'll be sitting back in your rocking chair, you're 80, 90 years old, and you're gonna have regrets on what you're doing. The only person you can blame is you. Get busy living, get busy dying. Which one are you gonna choose? Man, that it is. Get busy living and get busy dying. Hey, I think I said a mouthful. Mr. Lance, thank you so much for coming to the show, bro. I appreciate you, bro. All right, man. We'll see you guys next week, man. 10 Minute Stories. We out.